it's kind of funny that you probably wouldn't know this and yes um unless uh you know you're a husker fan that uh is kind of in the system here um athletic director trev alberts of the university sent out a uh memorial stadium survey to everybody and it was kind of funny i just got mine yesterday and this is like went out i think last thursday it started going out and i think it's funny that i got one because i i'm not a season ticket holder <laughs> You know, I I don't have to pay to go into the game. I don't pay to park. I, I'm working on that day. So my opinion doesn't count in it. But it was pretty cool that, um, you know, they sent out because they really are dedicated. I mean, not just on the, on the field like we've been talking about with the talent and stuff they've added, but they're really – Trev Alberts is on – you know, he, he's on the front lines and he wants to improve the fan experience at Memorial Stadium. And quite frankly, it is, it, it, it's pretty, it's lacking. I mean, when I first started, when I was a little kid back in the 70s, the first time I went, not a lot has changed inside Memorial Stadium since then. Um, you know, yeah, they've, they've made additions here and there, but the overall fan experience kind of sucks, if you ask me. Um, you're still, you're like cattle stuck in uh, on bench seating. Um, and, you know, they had this big push a few years back when they added more seating. You know, they added an upper deck to get the numbers up over 90,000. I don't think you need that anymore. I, I think eliminate a lot of that. Um and, and for God's sakes, give everybody chair back seating um, because that's what the fan expects these days. You cannot go and and be expected to go and either bring your own uh, stadium seat cushion or 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 buy one when you're there. You know, rent one and, and still be just packed in like sardines, shoulder to shoulder, and and just uncomfortable and. Um, you know, the bathrooms need to be updated. I mean, there's so many things. And, you know, they, they're they looking at doing the whole whole overhaul, which you can easily do, and many stadiums have already done, and make it more of that NFL model and, and add some club seating, you know, field-level club seating, stuff like that. Um, you know, make everything modernized. And, I mean, for God's sakes, you still, like, when you go into the men's bathroom, uh, you're using a, a, a steel trough urinal. Like it has always been there since I've been alive. It, it's just bizarre in some aspects and, and it really needs to be updated with, which other parts of the stadium have been updated and which are nice and with the suites and everything. But you know, your average fan can't afford to be, you know, in a suite or in club level or what have you. And then the biggest thing is alcohol sales. I mean, everybody knows how much alcohol sales adds to your profit margin and everything. And quite frankly, right, even though, you know, Nebraska is a very conservative, probably the most conservative state out there, um, they're starting to realize now that, I mean, right down the street, right down the road in Omaha, they, you know, at Creighton basketball games, they, they sell alcohol. Um, so you can't tell me that, that Lincoln can't do the same thing. Um, it just has to be approved. And then all of a sudden you add that aspect onto it. And then you're not, I don't think you're out there searching to get fans into the stadium and, and having to bail out your, 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 your sellout streak by, uh, you know, having, you know, uh, big, big companies buy off all those extra tickets um, and just give them away basically to, to keep that, sell out streak alive which we've been seeing um so yeah eliminate eliminate i don't know how many thousand seats you need to eliminate but make it a pleasant experience everything most of everything else is is pretty darn good and and like we mentioned earlier that you know you, you don't have a team that that can't even get 500 for five years and still have the, the fan support come out that they do have um it's pretty incredible and I don't think there's any other school in the country that, that could claim that. And, um, you know, obviously we've seen this all ties into, you know, what what they've done to improve, every, you know, 
the product on the field and the fan experience on game day. And uh, it's only going to get better and better because uh, I think you have the right people installed and that know what they're doing um, compared to, you know, days in the, or years in the past when you had athletic directors that had, had a different agenda than, than actually somebody that, that played here and is passionate about it and, and knows what it means to the fan base. Yeah, it's pretty incredible when you consider the number of people that continue to show up versus what the product has been on the field for the last five or six years in particular. And even before that, it was certainly uh, a downgrade from what was expected and what was on the field for so many decades, which was the elite, um, one of the top two or three programs in the country for decades and decades and decades. But, uh, yeah, the fans continue to show up and pack the place and um, should be given some experience that's on par with what you find elsewhere in the country. Well, especially this day and age when, you know, it, it how many people would rather stay home and watch it on TV in the comfort of their own house and they can watch several games at the same time and, um you know, you don't have to deal with with fighting the crowd and parking and all that. You've got to you've got to make the, the the fan experience something worthwhile and coming to see, um, especially when you have a subpar product out on the field. Star Trek Elysium, we appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for the contribution. Thank you so much for that. Absolutely. And uh, we've got um, Moonbots here. <laughs> and of course he's going to say something about the Yanti. The Yanti will rise. I, you know what? I love it. You know, Moonbot knows. I mean, he knows what I think about Jacques Yant. And um, yeah, I mean, you're looking at a, a position group that's wide open. I mean, you know, you, you do have Ramir Johnson and Gabe Urban coming back and Gabe Urban coming off of injury, but, um, and, and Marquis Stepp. But, uh, you know, you added some pieces to that puzzle, and, and Jacquez Yant right there has every chance in the world to, uh, you know, going into spring ball to to grab that, that job. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if he comes out of spring ball as that lead, that lead dog in the room. Star Trek coming back with uh, Anthony Grant and Trey Palmer. I guess he wants us to talk about him. <laughs> Well, which, 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 which we have, and, and you have, I should say. And, of course, we <laughs> talked about Trey Palmer when he made his transfer last week. Yeah, I, you know, and, and adding, adding a guy like Trey Palmer with, you know, with, with his credentials coming out of high school as, you know, the number two player in the country overall, uh, according to Rivals. And uh, it is has been at LSU and, and has – Played behind, um, I don't know how many NFL wide receivers can we count that he's uh, <laughs> been behind in his time in Baton Rouge, um, but he has proven that he's an elite punt returner and kick returning specialist. And adding a guy like that, uh, athlete, athletic freak like that, is only going to pay dividends. Um, and he was a Mickey Joseph guy. Mickey Joseph recruited him originally to LSU. And uh, obviously they have a pretty special bond where he would uproot himself. And, well, he, obviously he was already in the transfer portal, but um, to decide, you know, and it's a, it's kind of a culture shock. I mean, I, I've been to, I've been to Baton Rouge. I've been to New Orleans many, many, many times. I, I mean, I lived in the South for 10 plus years. I, I know what it's like, the difference between, living in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Lincoln, Nebraska. It's a different animal. Um, but if you believe in your coach, you believe in, in what they're telling you, then it, it makes it you know, pretty, pretty much of a no-brainer, especially like I mentioned earlier. If you get somebody to come here and visit, um, they're, they're always shocked because it's not what they expected. You know, Most people come here, they have no idea where Nebraska even is. 
and they think it's just a big cornfield from what they've heard. And when they get here, they're they're generally shocked and surprised in a good way. Um, and that just had part of it. And like we mentioned earlier about Anthony Grant, I mean, that's a home run. That's a guy, like I said earlier, that didn't even have an offer um, last Thursday. Did not have an offer, but was coming here to visit. And now he's on board, and he's a kid that uh, he had, what, 1,800? I think 1,700, 1,800 yards last year for for, uh, New Mexico military. Um, And, like, 18 touchdowns, something like that. And run – ran wild and, you know, led his team to a national title game over Iowa Western. And um, he's, like I said earlier, he, he reminds me a lot of Diedrich Mills. Um, and, and heck, I mean, maybe a Mike Rogier type of guy, same kind of build, everything like that. Um, you don't know until they get here. It's all speculation right now. But I, like I said earlier, I, I love the addition of both of these guys. Only going to make Nebraska better. Alan's always here making Nebraska better and our show better by uh, telling everybody to hit the like button and contributing. So, Alan, we know you. We see you there. We appreciate it so much. Thank you for that. And uh, Levi. Has Alan been in every all 52 weeks? I think I would would not bet against it. Yeah, I think so. I think so, too. I think so, too. And if he missed one or two, he's made up for okay. it. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> who knows who was here the first show? Yeah. We were just getting started. Uh, people didn't know where to find us. Oh, he says no. He said no. <laughs> no, didn't make the first one. Uh, he was here soon. It was. It didn't take yeah. him long. Yeah. Levi, appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for your contribution, Levi. Shout out to the Voice of College Football and GBR. Thank you so much for that. That means go big red for those of you that are wondering. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's an old one. It goes way back. I don't know when that started. I don't either. That up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure either, but uh, it has caught on social media. I mean, it, it, it started when social media did, I'm sure. Oh, really? Yeah. PBR? Well, really? just the, the abbreviation. I mean, everybody's said go big red for forever, but. Uh, this is that abbreviation that, you know, hashtag GBR is what I'm talking about. So, okay. <laughs> For those of us old people that had to transition into social media and stuff, you know. <laughs> well, I'm trying to find it here, and you know what I'm coming up with, GBR, Great Britain. So exactly. we'll have to keep, yeah, it is. We'll have to keep well, digging. What are you looking at, the Olympics uh, standings or what? There? No, I'm Googling it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, uh, Nolan, thank you so much for that. Appreciate your contribution. Thank you so much for being here, Nolan. All right. Anything else we need to clean up or get to here? David just, David was just asking if we're going to get a DT in in the transfer portal. And yeah, that's, um, like I I mentioned a little bit earlier that, yeah, there's, there's two of them right now that they're really, uh, they're after and, um, we'll kind of see how things play out, but uh, I, I fully expect them to uh, get at least one defensive tackle and maybe two here uh, before things are said and done. 